So today's episode, I'm I w- I went into this pretty trepidatious because I want to, you know, it's hard. I don't mind asking personal questions. Now I can hear you. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> now you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> On today's episode, yeah. we're do- we have Jack Osborne, and I was nervous. I'm always nervous to ask about somebody's health. You know, he has MS, mm-hmm. and um, I want to know what that is like. So I'm gonna ask i don't know if you is that polite you know we could go how are you and they don't bring it up i think i'm going to be a little more direct than that i want to know what he's doing um i don't know if you know but there was a big scare with his mother a huge scare with his mother um i hope she's okay but i'm going to which was on tape i'm going to play him that tape i hope he doesn't uh i don't know how he'll respond to that um and uh just his family is there going to be an oz fest how is ozzy how is the family how is he doing There's what so does many he think questions. of tom sandoval that's what i really want to know so many deep <laughs> questions uh-huh. all coming up right now with jack osborne okay well, the, oh. and the band is playing. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jack and Schultz, his daughter. And we have Jack Osborne in the house. Yeah. Yes. Howdy. Howdy. Wow, you've become very Western <laughs> in your older age. It's yeah, like, you know, it happens. Not cheers. Not, not cheers. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> right. Do you, uh, do you uh, uh, maybe, I don't know if this is a, how do you identify as an American, uh, as a UKer? I would it? say I'm probably more American than most Americans at this stage. Than most Americans? Yeah. With Were you I, born here? No, oh. I, was born in, I was born in London. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But you've spent more of your life here. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. at least your television life. No, I, yeah, I've been here since I was 12. So, well, we actually, actually longer than that because we, we'd moved here twice before we, and then permanently decided to drop anchor and like. And you guys, yeah. you and your family kind of uh, gave us more culture, more w- uh, things that are synonymous with uh, American culture than anybody from America. I don't think there would be the Kardashians if there wasn't the Osbournes. No, I definitely, well, I think eventually we would have landed, you know, someone would have realized like, hey, there's a whole, uh, a whole new way of entertaining people. Uh, eventually, I just don't know if it would have happened. But you the were, the first, uh, we were the first sensation family reality is, I, I think, the category. Everyone always says like, "Oh, you were the first reality show," but we really weren't because like Survivor was out before us, and Cops had been around but for a billion years. But I feel like that's years. like a different category. That's yeah. competition, and yeah. Cops is like a train wreck. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Listen, Cops is amazing to Cops go to. I, I, I that's like what me and my wife will watch to go to sleep bad at night. Bad boy, bad boy. It's right. so or cheaters. Did you ever yeah, watch cheaters? cheaters? Remember when the dude got stabbed? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that, was, that was a good show. You know, yeah. the guy, that's my son's friend that got stabbed. That was mm-hmm. uh, uh, what's his name? Clark Gable. Whoa. Cl- wasn't no, Clark? No, no, it wasn't. Clark came after. It was the original guy that got stabbed. Oh, wow. Clark Gable's grandson was the host of that for a while. Yeah. Wow. How are you? I'm good. Oh, yeah, I'm really good. You are? Yeah, and, I'm hanging and, in there. And family good? Everyone's great. great. Yeah. Mom's mom's in England right now. Dad's kind of hanging out. He just had his final surgery so he's uh on what well so he's been kind of laid out for a few years he, he took a fall back in 2019 and he essentially shattered his cervical spine he is a uh, like a, a, who, even when i was working with your mom he he takes did he take a fall like or i remember he did the atv or that yeah that was a, that was 20 plus years ago he did That's the atv crash 20 plus years no yeah way. yeah You're that, old dad. yeah that was in 2000 and f- <laughs> when when was that that was 2003 Oh, wow. Yeah. So Time it's not flies. when you were working with, you weren't working with Sharon. Okay. I right, thought I knew. Okay, right so after, you, like right after you guys started working together because yeah. AGT wasn't much. And then he took another fall recently. Yeah, he took a fall. He, he, he missed the bed and uh, he fell like face down on the ground at he night. He missed the bed. Yeah, he got up to pee, pitch black, you know, and just kind of like stumbled his way, thought the bed was closer than it was, <clears throat> missed it and just face planted and like, because of the quad bike accident, he had a bunch of just vertebrae, de- vertebrae issues and deterioration after, you know, because when they put rods and stuff in you, like eventually it starts to kind of 
wear things down as you get older. Because I saw, so he's, is he good? Is he, he's, he's, he now after this last surgery, they think, okay, you're good. You can start doing like lots of physio. So, and but he can start doing lots of physio. I yeah. think, but you, didn't you post recently that there's a new album coming out or new music so or he, he, in 24? He is going to go back in the studio at some point in the next few months and, and put out another album. So that's kind of, that's, that's why he's putting a lot of his energy. And your your health, yeah, you're good. I'm chilling. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I was with I was I was with uh, Sharon uh, working on AGT, and I know you've talked about this publicly. And if yeah. you don't want to, you oh, don't. No, but you, you okay. have MS. Yeah, I do. I do. Wait, huh? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! But that did you just <laughs> give it to me? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll stay back here. I'm a germaphobe. Can you give it to somebody? You, I don't think you can, Dad. Okay, no. <laughs> But what's amazing is, so here's my, uh, Jack's, like from your mother as I would be, if it was my child, was like devastated at the time. Yep. You, you had a, you were about to start a show not unlike the one you're doing right now on Fox. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember what it was called. It doesn't matter. We'll just talk about the one on Fox. But you, you were about to start this uh, special forces kind of show on NBC. Yeah. And then you could not get a doctor's. Yeah. They, they turned around and they, because everyone is so, as you know, like scared to like put their stamp on something unless it's 100%. And so they were like, well, we think you're a liability. What, we, you have MS, and they were going to throw you out, out of helicopters. Yeah. Yeah, but I was like, I'm fine. And they're like, no, we no. think you're a liability. I get it. You don't get that? Uh, well, here's the thing. I would, I, my issue with it is like, well, you don't, you're like, don't tell me what I'm physically capable of. You're not me. But you, for those that don't know and are watching. Would a doctor not put their stamp of approval or the show was like, we can't take this? My doctor was like, yeah, you're good. Uh -huh. And the show's, the show uh, doctor and insurance was like, he's not good. My issue with that is like MS is a very unique disease to everyone that has it. You can meet someone who's the same age as you, got diagnosed the same day as you, had the same everything, and your journey with the disease can be totally opposite of each other. Like I've had it for, I've been di I was diagnosed in 2012 and- 11 years. And I'm, there's nothing I can't do. Like I, I do jujitsu four days a week. Well, that's what I, I was do, gonna I, say that you, when you hear MS, that's a devastating. I remember working with Sharon at the time. It was devastating. Yeah. You know, you're her baby boy. You're always, regardless of how old you are, you're always a baby boy. I was, I was oh my God, you hear a child has MS. Um, and then throughout the years, I've been watching you do uh, climbing mountains and doing fitness things and like beyond what anybody that has no diagnosis. I feel like every show you do is either ghost or challenges. <laughs> yeah. You're challenging your body to like so reach, reach the max. Did you find a cure? <laughs> no, um, I don't know if I found a cure. Uh, because if you, if I like my, I'm, I'm the world's worst MS patient. I'll tell you that. Like I, if a doctor says, don't do that or do it. I'm like, man, like I, I don't, I haven't taken my meds in a very long time. You don't take your meds? No, no. And it's, Why? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> this is the kind of person I am. So the do the doctor's like, all right, take these meds, you know, it'll it'll help, whatever. Um, and I was doing it for a long time. And then I had the thought of like, well, what happens if I stop taking my meds? How long can I go without a significant like flare up? That was five What years. is a flare up? Tell me what a flare up is. So a flare up, uh, the way MS attacks your body, it, it's an autoimmune disease where your nerve, your uh, your immune system basically goes nerve endings bad. Let's attack them, and so it erodes this fatty sheath around your nerves, which is called myelin, and so it demyelinates the nerve, exposes the kind of core of the nerve. Like think of it as like the copper inside of a wire. Okay. Um, and that will break down over time. So when you have a flare up, it means like oh, your body's gone into like its its state of inflammation. It's attacking a nerve. Um, and then eventually it well, will is it subside. Is it, it painful? Like, what did you feel? How did you be. know you had MS? So what prompted me to go to the hospital was I went blind in my right eye, like fully. I, was like, I had about maybe five or 10% of my peripheral vision. You just woke up one day and you couldn't see? It, 
it, it was over three days. So like I woke up and I had like a black dot in the middle of my, my vision. And then um, throughout the day, it kind of got bigger and bigger. And then within three days, I had, you know, all central vision was just gone. So I did what any normal person does. When there's a problem with your eye, you go to the eye doctor and you're like, what's going on? And, and then they sent me to the hospital and I had all the tests done. And they were like, no, this is MS. Because they, they determined it was MS, not only because of the test, but 18 months prior, my legs went numb for like three months. And me just being a 25-year-old, you know, knucklehead, I was just like, oh, I pinched a nerve in my back. I'll be fine. And I just, you know, eventually the, you know, the feeling came back to my legs. But you were, you, you were walking around with numb legs? Yeah. And it was the strangest kind of numbness, too, because, like, I couldn't really, like, it, it felt like... Um, like when I touch my legs, the feeling it felt was like my legs were Play-Doh. It was just weird. And then if hot water touched my legs, it felt icy cold. And if cold water touched my legs, it felt burning hot. And you didn't go the first day. You didn't go to the... <laughs> no, the, this no. is the difference between you and I, Howie. Big difference. I I am like the... I'm like, there's, there's you know, people who are take you know over hyper concerned about that stuff and then there's people who are just like i don't care if actually you guys are very similar he is very concerned about everyone around him and his family and will make you go to the doctor as soon as you say that there's an issue he won't oh okay so, yeah. but i'm afraid of the doctor yeah but i'm afraid of catching something we have there because like, there'd be other him. sick people there yeah but if my i would imagine that if my legs were uh play-doh i might no, you at least go to the eye doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, wait, Howie, do you have doctors come to you? Uh, no. No. No, you went to the doctor yesterday. No. Oh, yeah, I went to doc. I had to go get shots because uh, I'm going out of town. Uh, but but um, <laughs> um, I've had a doctor come to me. What are you saying? No. I'm a big fan of home doctors. Big fan. Really? Yeah. Then why didn't you marry one? Why didn't I marry one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. No one there. You know, it would have been good. I, maybe I could convince my wife to go to med school. I, I could, would do I would do that. If yeah. I if it wasn't if it wasn't He's my, a bigger fan of designers. Isn't your wife a designer? An interior designer, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. She's got good taste. I yeah. like that. It's good. Well, so you're like a you're an accessory to where you live? <laughs> um I don't know if I I don't know if my aesthetic ever matches with hers. She's into like you know, a lot of uh, earth tones and, you know, a lot of, lot of house plants and, you know, she likes that vibe. Basically, and like... you, like... I, you like I could live in a tent. Like, I don't care. Which you have done. I have done. <laughs> so, so my point is, these... As you describe your um, experience, for most people listening and watching, that's pretty harrowing. Yeah. So now you get diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And they say to you, you need these medications because the the prognosis you're given by the traditional doctor is what? What did they say to you? Well, they, in my experience, they, they, they never really gave you, they can't give you a prognosis other than like, hey, you've got this disease. Here's where it could go, but it might not. We don't know. Because there's so many, it's like I said, it's, as, it's literally as unique to the individual that has it as their own fingerprint. It is, it, it, there's no... Um, did you get depressed? I got really, I got bummed out because I, and, and I was, uh, yeah, I was depressed because it was like I had, Pearl was three weeks old when I got diagnosed. I, you know, I was 27, 28. And I was like, cool, like I'm, you know, this is a great time in my life. And, you know, I'd been sober for a while at that point. And I was like, well, what the fuck was this? Like, what's the point in any of this? You know, so I had that for a short window. Uh, and then I was at, uh, and then I ended up at a place where it was, well, I've got this baby and I have to take care of her. And I, you know, I was with, I was with my ex-wife at the time and I, I was, I had to pony up really. So they give you medication, the yep. doctor, the experts yep. tell you, you have to take this. Mm -hmm. And why, what is going on in your mind that you go, well, what happens if I don't take this? A couple things. So I'd gone to, um, uh, about two years after my diagnosis, I went to Germany and I did a bunch of stem cell. Um, Replacement? Uh, no, it was my own. It, it was, they harvested my own stem cells. So I had, so what they did, their belief at this clinic I went to was you have an autoimmune disease. So therefore your immune system isn't functioning correctly. So let's get your immune system functioning correctly. I, they did all these crazy detoxes. I did like chelation therapy and ozone therapy and had all these like IVs and everything. This is in Germany? In Germany for like a 10 day period. And in that 10 days, they're harvesting 
uh, they harvested my stem cells from my blood. So you, the moment you get there, they hook you up and they take out like a vast amount of blood. Um, and, and it made sense to me. I was like, oh, wait a second. I have an autoimmune disease that affects my neurological system. Why am I only treating the symptom of this disease? Why am I not treating the root of this disease? And so that's kind of the, the thought process at this clinic I went to. So um, I did did the whole treatment there. Um, I felt great. I, lit I, I did not have, I didn't have a cold or a flu or anything for like three years. It was amazing. My did you think you were cure cured? I don't, I don't think, because I, I don't think it works that way. I think it, I, I, it's my belief that like MS is on like a cellular level. Like I don't think it's something that they can just cure. But what I think they did was they were able to kind of re rebuild my immune system in such a way that my body has a natural ability to kind of keep it at bay. Now, if you go to it, if I were to talk to a neurologist or if I were to talk to anyone who's a professional in the MS field, they're going to go, it doesn't work that way. And were they not amazed at how you were? My, my neurologist is very amazed at my progress. He's very much like, huh? Has America adopted any of this? In certain ways and in, in, and not in others. Some, you know, we're getting, in America, they're getting a little closer to stem cell, like being more accepting of it and understanding of it. And, uh, and it's really weird as to why, I think there's a big misconception here as to why stem cells aren't as popular as they are. And most people think it's because, oh, you're using, you're using like embryonic yeah. tissue or fetal tissue and, and things like that. And in, and in certain cases, that is what is required but it, it's actually to do with the time and duration tissue and cells are out of the body. In, in America, you can't put, you can't have any human tissue out of a human body for more than 24 hours. And they need numerous, multiple days to grow the stem cells. So that's why like organ donors, right? They have 24 hours to get that organ in the new, in the patient because there's a, as it was explained to me, and I could be totally wrong, but as it was explained to me, they are unsure what happens to human cells that are out of the body for more than 24 hours. They don't know who, what, like they could corrupt, they could go gangrenous, I don't know. They, Sometimes what? it's just a stain on a comforter, right? <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't they just, I don't, I don't really know that much about MS, but like why wouldn't they just do kind of like a transplant and take stem cells from someone else that has healthy a healthy immune system and then so i because I, I as far as i know your own stem cells are always going to work the best because they come from you that's but that's not always the case because you can get uh like embryonic stem cells and stem cells from umbilical cords and stuff and and that as they explained to me in germany and that is the caveat is like this is um this is all has it as it was explained to me um, and you don't speak a word of German. I don't speak a word of German. <laughs> no, but I, we'll get we'll get into some just depressing stuff too about that clinic, which is kind of interesting oh, after this story. I don't wanna... But the um, <laughs> the uh, like if you're if you're older, you have less stem cells. So people mm -hmm. who are kind of 60, 70, 80, they need the embryonic stem cells because you want to get as many cells as possible. So just a, a little uh, stuff for a second. I always ask people to su subscribe or go to HowieMandel.com. But at my age, if you could send me stem cells. Yeah, apparently I saved I'm in my need. kids stem cells. So yes. you can have them if you want to. Yeah. Thank you. And but also for people who are subscribing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they apparently could, they I need send them. it too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the, here's the depressing part about that. Oh, they okay. go, you're I'm gonna, in Germany. You're going to tell us something wah, really wah, wah. depressing. No, Do we want depressing music? It's, no, it's, it? it's not overly depressing. It's well, just kind it, of like. But, but say it's, it's really mean. depressing and it's amazing. It, and then we'll use that as a bridge over this ad. Oh, come on. Howie Mandel here for HowieMandel.com. Okay. And now we're back. And now we're back for okay. the depressing story. Thanks. Let's uh, see how many people hung in for depression. Go ahead. So <laughs> the clinic that I went to, they're like, oh, we actually. We don't, they don't harvest the cells on site. They send it off to a lab and they're like, it's actually the oldest lab in Germany oh, no. that does this. Yeah, when you talk about the oldest lab in Germany and I'm to, like, to Jews, he, well, like and we are. Well, yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> well, how old is this lab? Thinking maybe the 70s, 80s, whatever. No. They're like, 1947, basically it was a bunch of Nazi doctors that did all these fucking twisted experiments during the war 
they were like, okay, well, now we know how to do this stem cell stuff. So war ends in 45 and they're like, well, let's just open up a clinic. Howie Mandel here. For HowieMandel.com, if you want Howie Mandel Does Stuff merch, you can get great stuff. Like this shirt here. Is, uh, this is a shirt, just go to Howie Mandel. It's an over shirt. We also have this thing here, and it's a t-shirt that looks like you got it tucked in, but you don't. It's a bad, I don't like. But we have everything from hoodies, uh, various hoodies and different colors. You can get t-shirts and stuff like that. There's all different, HowieMandel.com. It's all, Kenny, what's with this music? And why aren't you, fu camera's not moving. Trying to. I've known your mother. Uh, I don't know that she knows that I remember her, like even before she met your father really? at the comedy store. But she was. She had a the friend at the comedy store. Yeah. I can't remember the other girl's name that she worked with. It was her. Bell. Was it yes. Bell? Yeah. Bell is who I had to call when I came down here. Bell is who I had to call to get uh, time slots. Yeah. And her best friend was Sharon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mom, mom was like deep into the LA comedy scene. She was. Yeah. And then, but you're, you're did you know your grandfather? I, I, I was, I met him in the last kind of few years of his life because they were estranged for a long time. No, I know that. So for those that don't know, Jack's grandfather is a guy by the name of Don Arden. That's Sharon's dad. Mm -hmm. Don Arden is like an epic, I'm probably using the wrong term, but he was the, uh, kind of the the most successful kind of mafia of rock and roll yeah i yeah. mean he was a he, he he was known for like carrying he's a bad guy a bad he, guy who had all these great groups yeah he was like the suge knight of rock and roll in england in like the 60s 70s 80s and when you talk about rock and roll in england that was the home of rock and roll yeah. the british invasion and he had like electric light orchestra black sabbath yeah. All these other and there's there's amazing stories about him. Yeah, yeah. He brought over all the um, all the early like he brought a, he brought he was the first British promoter to bring over all the all the predominantly black musicians in America in the sixties. You got into the music business like I, I remember I became aware of you on the Osbournes. I didn't know I, I knew Black Sabbath and I knew That's who right. your mom was and I knew who your dad was, but I didn't know anything about the kids. And you were actually charged, not charged, uh, with a, you had a responsibility to go find new acts, like at 13 years old. Were you in the clubs at 12 sure. and 13? Were yeah. you even sure? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was Do you know how up. crazy that is? Well, yeah. <laughs> Do you as know a, that? As a parent I now. I didn't know that. Yeah. As a parent now. And, you gonna uh, send your kid out to- Hell no. no. <laughs> how old were you when you were going to the clubs and, all, and what I mean by charged with the responsibility of telling a record label who the next big thing is? I was, I was a, uh, yes, I was a talent scout. Um, it, how old? I was 14. <laughs> How did you even get into a club? Uh, well, a lot of them are, uh, are all ages and some they'll have, all, you know, they'll have 21 and over evenings or there's 21 and over parts of them like the like the Troubadour. It's an all ages club, but there's a 21 and over bar in it that you can't get into. Or, and the Whiskey and the Roxy, they were, they were fine, but the Viper Room was not, they were always really strict. Um, but I, it's funny, I was talking to my daughter about this the other day, cause you know, she's 11. Right. And I was saying like, <laughs> she's three years away from hitting the club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I said, I said, you know, when I wasn't much older than you, I used to either ride my bike or call a cab and go check bands out on Sunset by myself. And I would never in a million years allow my kids to do that in this city now. So at, a, at 14 years old, is there somebody that we would know of today that you spotted and brought... Um, I know your mother was uh, had found. Didn't she find Smashing Pumpkins? No, she managed them for. Oh, oh. She managed them for a period. Uh, already, already when they were well established. Oh. Uh, no, there was bands like um, I was around when uh, bands like Rooney got signed. There was a there was an artist called Melodrone, which I nearly, which I was like, they were in negotiation between us and this other label, and I kind of brought them to the label I was at. I'd signed a, a one band to a development deal. Um, and it was, you know, it was, uh, it was fun though, man. Like that was when like- Were you going to school at the same time? Like school yeah. in the day and then at night you would go- Yeah. And, yeah. What was, and that was your excuse for not having your homework done? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it literally was. They'd be like, why, like I would, I was not- Where'd you go to school? I went to a school in Santa Monica. 
Which one? Uh, I went to a school called Park Century, and then I went to, for a period of time, I went to uh, um, New Roads, and then I and I, we started doing the Osbournes, and I <laughs> did my GED. So you wouldn't send your daughter to the clubs, but do you think? Do you ever think now that you would put your family in a reality show? Like, would you do that nowadays? I don't. I don't know. And the reason I would, pro I'm probably leaning towards no. And the only reason being is, like, I want my kids to be kids for as long as possible. Enjoy it. Like we. But Every even when they were in it, you know, there's another sister, Amy, who didn't choose to be in it. Yeah. So they were, and you guys kind of I respected that. I actually think that's that. really nice. I hear from, I think it's pretty well known that Courtney has not wanted to be on the Kardashians for many years and said she doesn't want to be in it and kind of forced to be on mm. the show. I think it's really nice that it was. I don't, I don't buy that. You don't. Well, because where, where's Rob Kardashian? He checked out. I know, but he was never part of the three sisters that got like. No, sold. but he was that he, yeah, he was in there. It. He, he was, was in there at the, at the beginning. He was in. He was a he. He was a big deal for a minute. So you don't believe that she doesn't actually want to be on the show, and that's no. like you think. I think she could not line. show up. Yeah, I I a hundred percent think that the way that that uh, business is structured, mm -hmm. they all have to. They, they just, sign off. Yeah, they have to just continue to feed the beast. Were you ever, once you signed on and were involved in it, was there a time when you went, holy fuck? 100%. Without a doubt. There was a lot. That's why we ended it after three and a half seasons. We just couldn't. It wasn't sustainable. It was two things. It was it was taking a huge toll on, on I think, everyone's mental psyche. Why? Tell me what that, what that. Well, it was like. We, we went to bed, rela you know, we went to bed known amongst the music world, but not in this, in the, in the way of like, n not being able to walk down the street or getting followed. Because my dad, although my dad has been well known for many, many, many years, he was rock and roll famous. He wasn't TV famous. And it was, as you know, that's a very different thing, especially back then when, Right, no, all, no. All it was 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 TV, radio, movie. There was no internet. There was no. So you didn't enjoy that? I would think a young guy who's going into the clubs. And At first, I did. At first, it was great, and then it, it it was Pandora's box, because I I kind of fell into you know drugs fell into drugs, alcohol, just those usual you know Hollywood tropes of childhood. Success. But you don't think you would have done it if you weren't on TV? I. Don't think I, I think it just sped it up. I think it just gave me the, the, the means and the access that I wouldn't have had if I was just still bumming around on, you know, Sunset Strip, finding bands. Did you ever in finding bands and knowing who your dad is and knowing what the family business is, have you ever pursued music or did you have any no, desire to? No, I, I tried to play, like I was, as a kid, I, tried playing guitar and then I tried playing drums. I'm just not very musical at all. Like I, it's just not nothing that, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at even singing in the shower. Really? Amy's a singer, isn't she? Yes. And Kelly is too. Kelly, Kelly, yeah, had, Kelly had a couple of hits. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Kelly, yeah. Kelly toured with Robbie Williams and yeah, she had a really successful music career for a period of time. And uh, your mom good? The She's health good. Wise, because yeah. I also read that this is another thing I, I was reading that your parents or Sharon said that you guys they're moving back to London. That's where they. What is that? I'm, I'm using air quotes with moving back to London because it's they ain't they ain't gonna move back to England like they it's impossible. Why? Why? They've got their three kids and five grandkids in LA. Maybe they're, that's why they're moving back. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we're out of here. Yeah. These people suck. <laughs> no, but like, would you want to do that? Move away no, from well, your entire family as no, you I'm get old? I'm, my wife and I are both Canadian. Okay. You know, so we wouldn't do that because that's why I was surprised. That's why I'm asking yeah. you about it. And when it was mentioned in the papers and when I, I, you know, I didn't speak to Sharon herself, but when I read that, I didn't see the air quotes that mm. you are. No. Why it, would she they, say that? Would be, uh, where... The decision came mid COVID when lockdowns and they were, you know, my mom had to deal with what she had to deal with, with the talk and all the fallout from oh, that. That was horrible. And so she was like, uh, we're going to go back to England because it's, you know, it's a little bit more sane over there right now. And so she started redoing the house, which as you know, when you start remodeling, it's Doesn't not, 
It's she's not perpetually easy. remodeling. Yeah, that's she what your mother does. She loves it. It's why I married an interior yeah. designer. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, so you married your mother. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we if we if we're tapping into Freud, you know, it's <laughs> you you go with what you're familiar with. Um, but it's uh, they're going to spend more time over there. I don't think they're going to permanently move there. That's the goal. So you and you've stayed in. Uh, well, you sound healthy. You say you're healthy. You've stayed uh, fit. Right, you yeah. cut, like you had a big public weight loss when you were bo boxing and everything. And how do you feel about? Because I've read how your the rest of the family feels. The Sozempic thing yeah. is, is kind of blowing up. I listen. I think it's, I think it's good at the end of the day. R really, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, listen. I, th I there's always. I I think that there is a desire for self improvement from everyone. I don't care who you are at I, any cost. Sure. I mean, but everything comes at a price, right? Even if you were like, oh, I'm just going to diet and exercise. Well, that can lead to all sorts of bulimia or anorexia. It can be the start of that. Sure. I mean, every, listen, I think there's a pro and a con to everything. Right. But, you know, for my mom, I was not a fan of her doing it. I didn't think she needed to. I think the amount of weight that she was saying she needed to lose I was like, that doesn't seem like Ozempic worthy amount of weight. Like right. that seems like a, why didn't you just kind of go for a walk, you know, twice a day and cut out a few, uh, you know, desserts kind of amount right. of weight. Um, but my mom hates working out more than anything. And she struggled with her weight for as my, as long as I could remember. And it, she feel she's lost a shit ton of weight. She looks great. Yeah. I think she's lost a little too much weight, and I think she'll probably tell you the same. But she uh, she feels good about herself, though. And I'm like, okay, well, that has to be what that's worth something. If you're waking up in the morning going, you know what? I feel great. I'm not on this. She's not on it anymore. She's been off it for months, but it's like... No side effects. No, I think she had the kind of bog standard side effects. There's like the nausea in the beginning and things like that. But uh, but if you're nauseous, you feel like... Uh, I, I have my theory, though, uh, on Ozempic. You ready for this? I you know, ready. You well, wait. We'll be back with the theory <laughs> right after this. <laughs> oh, you're good at this. How do you know that we have two ads? You're I good don't. at this. No. <laughs> Even if there isn't one, we'll just sit here. They're watching this now. Yeah. No, but going, we don't have another ad. <laughs> Howie Mandel here for HowieMandel.com. If you want Howie Mandel Does Stuff merch, you can get great stuff. Like this shirt here. Is, uh, this is a shirt, just go to Howie Mandel. It's an over shirt. We also have this thing here, and it's a t-shirt that looks like you got it tucked in, but you don't. It's a bad, I don't like that. But we have everything from hoodies, uh, various hoodies and different colors. You can get t-shirts and stuff like that. There's all different, HowieMandel.com. It's all, Kenny, what's with this music? And why aren't you, the camera's not moving. Trying to. That's really good. That's a good tactic. I'm going to start using that on our podcast. Yeah. Like, stop I, people before a story and then slide it in. Yeah. Uh, we, he's used to dealing with Their no podcast deal. just relaunched their podcast, yeah. the whole family, the Osbournes. I know. Yeah. I did know that. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Right, What's so, your <laughs> feeling on Ozempic? You have a theory? Or I do. A I, I, have or? A, I have a theory why you see so much bad press about it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So. As we know, pharmaceutical companies pretty much run media, mainstream media at this point. What is it, like 70% of commercials on TV, it's pharmaceutical companies. Oh, 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 Ozempic. Oh, <laughs> she also doesn't want to have a music career. Yeah. <laughs> but you could. I could. We Thank could you. tweet. Listen, Thank you. there's you could a tweak. There's enough technology in this building. In your dad's building that you could, Thank I think you. you could drop a banger. Thank you. I've, I've been telling you that. Yeah, and I you didn't believe listening. me. But you go need ahead. to support so, your daughter. Hallie. So here's the theory. We are pharmaceuticals. We are owned. We are basic. So when you see stuff coming out about it and they're like, oh, it's causing this, it's causing that. I'm, I'm sat there going, huh, is this like a blood pressure company? forcing out bat, you know, to a smear Ozempic because people are going to lose weight. Their the heart health is going to be better. Their body, you know, there's also into conspiracy theories. Sure. But yeah. is it, but he is chases it, ghosts. but yeah. is it conspiracy theory when corporate espionage is a well-known thing and has happened since the industrial revolution? So let's talk about Russell Brand then. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Russell? Do you know him? I know, yeah, I've known Russell. I don't know him well, but I've known Russell t over 20 years. I um, I think that he, uh, 
I, man, it's, there's a, if there's smoke, there's fire. I don't necessarily, I don't, you, who knows what goes on behind closed doors right. at the end of the day. Right. Mm -hmm. So if people are saying, hey, I was wronged by this person, this person did X, Y, and Z, this, okay, I, you, you, sure, fine. If that's your experience and that's your experience, I, I guess more to be revealed at the end of the day. I do, you know, I do think it's uh, an interesting, I'm not dogging any, you know, anyone for not wanting to come forward, but it is, it is always a scary thing when accusations are made from pure no, no, anonymity. She's, she's come forward. Oh, she has now. She is forward. One of them, one of them is forward. I, I actually read her whole thing and her name yeah. and everything. One of them is, I, I, there might be more than one, but I did, uh, I know there's more than one accusation, yeah. but the, I, I have seen somebody identified come forward. But to the point, it leaves, when when accusations like that are being made from a, an anonymous source and people not willing to come forward, it then breeds conspiracy theories. Well, I know, well, because his whole thing, thing even before it came out was this is gonna be an attack on him because he challenges mm -hmm. the media. So I know that that is a lot of people's standpoint. Sure, yeah, I, I think that he certainly has ruffled a lot of feathers over the last, three years he has and and we do know especially in this room that there are a lot of powerful media entities and if they do want to shut you up they will yeah you know the, another big headline that i wanted to ask you about um that your mom actually commented on even before the headline came out that oh. the rudest boy ever was ashton kutcher yeah and i know you worked with him right on the yeah. 70 show yeah yeah. Uh, so that was, co we didn't know the Ashton thing was going to come I out. I know, it was just I saw a, that before. It was well, like before you say anything, uh, Ashton and, and, and uh, uh, Mila. Mila wrote, uh, because we do this before we have guests on the mm -hmm. podcast, they they wrote a tremendous letter telling us that you're a great character. Yeah, all about you. That you're a good <laughs> friend, you're trustworthy. Yeah. We got these letters, it just um, it came from Ashton. Remember we have, we yeah, have a character yeah. letter. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. That's me, Lacunas there, and Ashton Kutcher publicly apologizing after they wrote character letters on behalf of Jack Osborne. Yeah. yeah. He, he likes you. Uh, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I have, I worked with him on that 70s show and I never really socialized. I, I would see him out at events. We, all the time, 20 years ago, socially we were in the same circles. I was very good friends with Danny Masterson. So like I was around all the, like Wilma, Danny and I, we used to go to the same club every Friday. They were always the table next to mine. Like we spent an, an awful lot of time hanging out together. Um, so I, but Ashton was always, he was never really hanging out. Um, right. Was he rude little boy to you? I, I think those are the words your mom used, yeah, right? He, yeah, he was, I what it, you know my mom. She's not the best at remembering names. My 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 mom <laughs> mispronounced my wife's name for years. Probably still does. So when she said Ashton was a rude little boy, she meant who? She, no, she didn't say <laughs> Ashton. That's what. Yeah, that's who she was referring to. She had to. him on her, her show. Yeah. Uh, she mispronounced Kutcher. Kutcher. See. Kutcher. Kutcher. She she <laughs> mispronounced it, and. He and in the commercial break, he made a comment to her like, "Why, like, who, like, basically saying like, well, why are you even in this job if you can't do it?" Essentially, right? And um, which isn't nice. That no, is rude. it is rude, and especially yeah. to someone of my, you know, an older woman. It's like, okay, like someone thinks my mom should be in this job, yeah, so, right, and who's not you, yeah. Um, she she is one who. Even in these moments, like that probably wasn't Ashton's best moment, but uh, what I love about Sharon is that, and it must be weird being her uh, her offspring because we're all embarrassed, as you are, by our parents. <laughs> but she, all the time. But, Constantly. But all she the time. will never, I think I'm kind of like that too, but she'll never hold back. No. Because, and, and that's her honesty, that's what, people love about her but it's also the same that same thing that propels her to notoriety is the thing that gets her in trouble yes yeah it, it, but it's how she was raised being a a female working in the music industry in the 60s 70s and 80s you had to be tough to survive if oh, people, we just talked about who her father was yeah and if if, if people 
obviously things have got leaps and bounds better, but thing shitty things still happen to people. People, and it was far worse back then. And she had to have thick skin to survive. And so she speaks her mind if she feels disrespected or anything. She doesn't hold back. I know you do a show, but do you really believe in ghosts? Um, I believe that there is absolutely something. There is a there is a phenomenon that occurs, whether it is a the once living consciousness of a human being that's still lingering. Don't know. It could be interdimensional. It could be you know quantum entanglement. It, there is okay, a there so is I'm a gonna phenomenon. You, I'm going to ask you a question. I want to roll that tape, okay? And you tell me what what is this? What happened? Because okay. this freaked me out. Somebody yeah. Show, look look at this. Mom. Mom. Sharon Osborne was found unresponsive and rushed to the hospital. Hey, hey, hey. Lights on now, now, now. We need an ambulance now. What 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 happened there? We have no idea. And I'm this isn't just me throwing stuff out to get view whatever for to, had, to, to, to give it some context. This is uh, we got this from the trailer of the new season on your Travel Channel show called Night of Terror. Night of Terror. You took your parents in, you took your mom into this room. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, when I read about it, you said a d it says a demon, or did you say a demon I, possessed her? I didn't, I didn't, I never said possessed. I, I believe his, his, let's, let's break it down factually. She passed out and lost consciousness for 20 minutes and even stopped breathing for a period of time. She, we rushed her to the hospital. She was in hospital for two days. They did every blood panel imaginable. She had heart scans, brain scans, sleep scans. She had every test imaginable to try and determine medically what happened to her. The only thing that was off was her electrolytes were a little bit low. I've been slightly dehydrated before. That's never happened to me. Like, I have you? Has that ever happened to you when you've worked out a little too hard? And she had nothing previously going in. Didn't nothing, feel anything. Nothing. She was totally fine, completely normal. We were joking two minutes before that happened, and everyone, even the doctor, goes, "Well, she fainted." And I, I have the raw footage. Obviously, we have to cut it down for TV, but that's not fainting because what happened when you faint, you whoop, you're out. It was a very gradual over two minutes is how slow she went out to lose consciousness. Because I know when you're dehydrated too, you feel something leading up to it. Yeah. Like whether it's a headache or you feel dizzy or something. Yeah. And if there was nothing. So being the devil's advocate, you're doing the show. Does it, does what happened to her correspond to anything that you were specifically looking for? The, the room that we were in allegedly had reports of a very dark, ominous entity. That's what, that's what a witness said. They saw some kind of weird shadow figure. So we put my mom in there and what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a weird shadowy entity seen by a witness. Yeah. So I put my mom in there. Yeah, why <laughs> not? not? She's a tough cookie. She can handle it. Oh, that's so much. I thought. <laughs> um, but we, we put her in there. She had a blindfold on and so there's an experiment, it's a sensory deprivation experiment. You kind of do it as a way to minimize distraction. If you're feeling something, hearing something, it's kind of, it's, you're using your body as like a, a, a tool, if you will. Um, and yeah, she just slowly sat back and her breathing got really heavy. Her head went back and over two minutes lost, lost all consciousness. And then went back to perfect after the hospital. Uh, she regained consciousness after about 20 minutes. Uh, ambulance, you know, when the ambulance got there and this, that, and the other. And they, um, and she was relatively alert. I think she was more scared afterwards. And um, Does she have any recollection of anything in nothing, the room? Nothing. She says she remembers sitting down, putting the blindfold on, and then coming to in the back of the ambulance. Wow. Yeah. And I don't, here's the thing. I've been for years doing, I've done over a hundred ghost hunting sh episodes. I have had very few experiences that would lead me to believe that, oh, that's demonic, that's evil, that's this, that's, oh, that guy got possessed. Or I, I'm, I'm the ghost hunter that's like, that's not, that can't happen. That's not real, that's made up. That scratch in your arm is because you rubbed up against an old screw that's sticking out of this half condemned building. So when I, 
I always come at it from a, well, what could this be in reality? You know, what, what it, I like to deal in the three-dimensional world before I start going into the spirit realm and this, that, and the other. I can't explain it. I, I've shown it to the footage to numerous doctors. They couldn't explain it. Even even when we we're at the hospital, they're like, oh, well, she fainted. And I showed the footage to the doctor right, you know, 20 minutes off, 30 minutes after it happened, and his jaw hit the ground. And he's like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. So I have, I've chosen to peg it as a, paranormal event that happened to my mom could it have been some kind of evil spiritual attack sure. and also it's a teachable moment yeah if there is a dark entity an evil entity uh, reported in a room don't take your mom no no that's the that's the thing <laughs> just don't take your mom uh you're on this show um uh, special force yeah you should do it no, I won't. No, you should you do should it. Not. I, I should shouldn't. absolutely do it. He you don't know me. Not. I will not do it. Why? I will not let him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because I'm scared. It's not scary. It's so safe. Did you become good friends with Tom Sandoval? I saw you go underwater. Weren't you like underwater in, in helicopter? a helicopter? I, yeah, I didn't do that challenge. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. That's the one that scared me. When I saw the ads, that's the one that scared yeah. me. But they came close to death. We had JoJo on. She talked about how it was a life changing. Uh, oh, JoJo's. We had she JoJo. Was great. Nick. Well, you had, you had Sandoval, Sandoval before he went out there. Yeah. 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 yeah that did you know about him before he came on the show? I did. Yeah. I did. And uh, the moment that we got in the bus, because they keep us all separate, and they put you in a bus, and then it's like, okay, camera's up. Now you guys can talk to each other. And he had like a, a scarf covering his face because it was cold. It's winter down there. Oh. And he gets on, and I'm like, who's this guy? He's got white nails. I was like, you know. <laughs> and he gets in the bus, and he takes the scarf down. And I just yell, oh, we got a Scandival. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so bummed it didn't make the cut. It didn't? No. Well, we'll make it here. <laughs> we got a Scandival. How did he react to what? that? He went. He kind of just shrugged and was like, oh. And then I felt a little bit bad because I'm like. A little bit. I'm like, hey, he's been, he, that dude just can't catch, catch a break. And how was your experience with him? I, listen, I got along with everyone. I. You know, he's a rock star. I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we know. We, we, we heard a lot about his band. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the most extras. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can't you imagine if you were 14 years old now and you walked into the whiskey? And so the most extras just covering a, like a White Snake song. Yeah, sign him right up. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got along with Tom and I actually got along really well. Uh, we Jojo talked about how he got everybody in trouble by urinating near the beds or what? Yeah, he would. He just like walked out of the tent, uh, the the bunkhouse, and would just like piss in the dirt. Right, can't, can't do that. You can't uh, piss in the dirt. No, but uh, yeah, he. Uh, it was definitely. Did you bond with anybody? I got I bonded pretty well with uh, Bodie Miller. We got along really well because we were like the token dads there. We had you know we had about a billion kids between the two of us. You have four now. I have four. Wow. I think he's got. I think Bodie's got seven or eight. Wow. Um. And are you gonna are you gonna have more? My wife wants. She, I've got four girls, and my Good luck, buddy. My, thank you. That's Eleven right. is the oldest. Eleven is the oldest, and yeah. winter is coming. It's it's um, emotions. The winter is coming. Even with emo that accent. Uh, emotions are. Uh, it's there's been a lot of tears lately, um, but uh, over winter coming or was that a, no, a throwback just, it, to it throw, uh, throwback to Game of Thrones? Yeah, like yes. bad things happen. Well, you yes. grew up with two sisters, mm -hmm. so you probably are quite aware of what is yeah. heading your way. I I have learned to just be like my solution is let me just hold you. And so I just hold her. And really? Is that going to work when she's like 15 years old? It works right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's and all you care that's about. That's all I she's care about. That's not going to hold. No. It, especially <laughs> when you're the problem. Yeah. So you're going to become the problem. Mm. That's what was, I, your, was your dad the problem for you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Is he still the problem? <laughs> no. Now we get it. We've talked about this a lot. Now we get along really, really well. But when I think it was like ninth grade, right? Was mm. when it hit ninth grade all the way till I graduated, we did not get, get along at all. What is it about your dad that you didn't like? He's Hello? super controlling. I existed. He's super controlling. I'm not controlling. What it <laughs> is is. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, he is. He's super controlling. Um, I got in trouble all the time for every little thing. Like when he said he gets the last word and then I would say, okay. And then I would get in trouble for saying, okay. Oh. But, but it's also, it was where you come from. <laughs> I would imagine you're gonna be trouble 
because of your experience growing up, I mean, you're going to be trouble for your kids mm -hmm. because when your 13 year old little girl says, I'm going to the whiskey tonight, you're going to be more aware of what I'm going to be. So am I. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not going to love that. No. It's not a, it's not a daddy and me dance. No, no, right. it's definitely not. Yeah, it is. Uh, <sighs> Day at a time. So but I, he was super strict. I'd imagine your parents weren't as strict. Like when I got a piercing, then he took away my car. But uh, I saw well, that your parents you were okay with like tattoos and stuff like that. But they were not okay with that stuff with my sisters. They were with me, which is very there strange. There is a double standard. Yeah, I, big I time. I was like that with my son. I had no curfew. My sisters did. My parents didn't freak out if I was, you know, drinking at first. Mm -hmm. Then they did. Um, yeah, so it is very much a double standard. Who's the oldest? My sister, Amy. So did she get it the worst? Because I feel like I got it the worst. No. 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 Mm, no. She, no, she kind of... She but kinda, she sounds like the... Uh, I'm, I don't know what the term is, but she wasn't interested in being on camera. It seems like she was very uh, in control of herself. It, I don't... I don't, uh, I don't know. She's not a wild child. I Kelly think, seems like more of a wild yeah, child. Yeah, Kelly was very much the wild child. She's the middle, so she, she kind of had to be. Uh, Amy was more, she had an idea of the kind of musician she wanted to be, and that musician was not one that was on MTV. Back then. Right. Wasn't every musician on MTV? There was like the avant-garde, you know, Fiona Apple style type musician and that that's what she was drawn to at least as as I saw it we're not super close we don't we barely talk so I I couldn't really tell you oh is that true yeah yeah is that is that tension uh we're just very different we leave we led we've led very different lives uh we're not particularly close it's just you know you're happened. close to Kelly. Yeah, yeah Kelly and I speak pretty much every day we work oh, you're together. doing the podcast yeah we work together and yeah it's Wow. I guess it's that's just normal sibling. Yeah, I think everyone just assumes like, oh, famous families, everyone must like, oh, and it's like, well, no. Like, I, I know more people that don't have close relationships with siblings than do at the end of the day. Is um, is it fun for you to do the podcast with, you do mom, dad, and Kelly it is, and you? It is a lot of fun. You just relaunched it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just re we launched it like a month ago. Uh, it's great. It's fun. It's, uh, it's and you're relaunching on the. Uh, I saw you on the podcast talking about it's not just a podcast, but it's a it's a platform where you're going to be showing the Osbournes. The, yes, all your um, whatever you have. Right? Yeah, the content, all the stuff that we own, have you know collected over the years. So we're going to launch this. Uh, it'll be first quarter of next year. We'll we'll launch the website, and so it's essentially our own mini Patreon. So if you subscribe, you get all this extra content. I did a show with him that I thought was great. Oh, it was that so good. That so good. I, I don't know why it doesn't exist. And you should go out and pitch it again because all those buyers are kind of gone. But if you had news that you needed to break to somebody, yeah. you could hire a celebrity or yeah. one of his friends to go do it. So It was called Uncomfortable Conversations with Celebrities. I love that. You know, so if you were going to like fire someone or break up with your boyfriend or whatever... Bring in a celebrity to, to, to do it. To do it. <laughs> I should, love that. You, you gonna do it again? Let's try to sell. We that. should. Let's do it. I think it's a. I, I'm not it's kidding. It's so you. funny. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just do it on digital? Like, why wouldn't you do it yourself? Well, even so, there's yeah. another way we can do it. I just thought that was a great there's show. There's so much more access yeah. now than you had before to just put stuff out. So if you're a brand out there and you want to uh, invest, yeah, here we go. Invest. <laughs> Executive yeah. produced by myself and Harry Mandel. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do you own it? Uh, I think I do actually. Find out first. Yeah, and I th I'm pretty sure I do. I think it reverted back. I don't want to be sued. That's air, quotes? I, air quotes. I don't know. <laughs> we didn't use them before. Yeah. In, I don't know how important punctuation is uh, or any. Sued is not the same as moving to. I Canada. find a lot of people. I don't really know when to. I was never. Just do it anytime. Anytime. I don't, I don't just don't like have, I'm going to go for a drive. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a GED, so it's I don't. It's like the uh, equivalent of a whisper. I'm that, excited yeah. about it though. That was an exclamation. That there you old go. people oh, do. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Exclamation. Point. I'm really excited about doing that. Is that show. that's the thing now? Is it? What? That's a thing now? Now it is. I think I'm a trendsetter. You're just making it up? I did. Mm -hmm. You're good. great, Jack. What do you want to promote? Um, Not a Terror comes out. 
I think October, this Sunday, October 1st, but this will be out uh, later. Oh, later. wait, I saw but, something. I did want to ask you about something. I saw some a story that said that you were terrorized by a doll for a year. Is that not true? I saw some headline <laughs> that said your whole family was terrorized by some doll for Isn't a year. Isn't that a movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chucky. Chucky. No, is what? that not it, so, true? <laughs> no, yes and no. It, was a, it started as a joke. Uh, my dad and I went to go visit Robert the Haunted Doll, which is a... Robert which, the Haunted Doll. It's who Chucky's based on. So there's a doll in Key West, Florida that lives in this museum that That was, is in the museum. It doesn't live there. You don't talk about it as... Do not anger Robert the Doll, Howie. I've That's heard about this. I heard that even if you talk about it, it's, it could be It's crazy. You, Wait, maybe I don't want to know about it. I did hear about this doll. Robert the doll. Yeah. Robert the doll. I, that's what this, that's this Robert. Is right there on the on the yeah, uh, proto. That's, yeah. that's Robert the doll. That's Bobby the doll. But I know him as Bobby. Yeah. But everybody else calls him Robert. Go ahead. So anyway, this doll was uh, allegedly cursed by uh, this young boy's nanny who was a voodoo practitioner and his spirit is bound to the doll. Anyway, if you disrespect the doll, you get cursed, allegedly. Oh, I love I love Robert in yep. Key West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No disrespect, Robert. <laughs> You're a doll. <laughs> Go ahead. He's such a doll. Anyway. You went to visit. And and when I did my show with my dad, which was World Detour, we used, I brought the doll along as a mascot, and then my dad believed he's been cursed by Robert. He thinks he has? Sometimes. <laughs> 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 like when? Like if it, if it burns when he pees? <laughs> he, oh, no. Robert. He does, he does come out. He's like, you know, a lot of really bad shit happened after we had that doll. I'm like, no, Dad, it wasn't Robert. We were friends with Robert. <laughs> we made Robert really famous. I love oh, that your dad's like so tough. Like he's, and then Robert though, he's yeah. scared of Robert. Scared of Robert. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. So on Travel Channel, uh, every, what, what day? I think it? every Sunday. Every Sunday, watch watch that show. We'll have all the links below, and you have and their podcast, the Osbournes. Yep, Osbournes right. podcast. You can find that wherever you get your podcast. And is there a jackosborne dot com? Is that uh, no? But if you uh, the, I think Osbournes dot com, and yeah, it's all it's over all our socials. If you go to myself, Sharon, Ozzy, whatever, you're selling any merch. Yeah, you know, will be much. Yeah, no more. You were also very instrumental in in managing and running. I know Sharon was uh, Ozfest. Yeah, that was a great thing. Oh, are, it was we awesome. ever gonna, are we ever going to see that? I would love Ozfest to come back more than anything. I would love that. Yeah, well, maybe one day. I we'll hope see. so. Yeah. Well, maybe. Could you be the MC? Would you come introduce the bands? <sighs> I, I'm not a big festival goer. Me neither. Because I'm, I'm a germaphobe, but I would do it on a hologram. Yes. I'll, Perfect. I'll, I'll, and you can get anybody on a hologram. Yeah. So if, now that I work with Proto Hologram, yes, I will be. I will be the MC for the next <laughs> Ozfest. Done. Is that Wait, a good announcement? Hold on. I you're not a uh, festival go, but I did run into you at the Malibu Carnival a year ago. Yes. Was that the Malibu Carnival? It's because is not my daughter made him go. Okay. My and he got out of there as quickly as possible. I'll do anything for a grand. Okay, kid. that's Don't good. you find that your parents do that for your kids? No, they're moving. <laughs> yeah, they're moving, exactly, they're out. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're right. How old is your daughter? Nine, I okay. have a nine and a seven year old. Okay, nice. And I have another one on the way. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Not were for you her. there by yourself or were you with I was, kids? No, I was with my kids, <laughs> okay. yeah. I avoid carnivals as a you know 38 year old man. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's a rough scene if you go alone. You know what's funny? I, they had, I took my daughter on the, uh, I think it was a Tilt-A-Whirl, my granddaughter, on the Tilt-A-Whirl or the Scrambler, like mm -hmm. one of those little rides. And this is like one of the setup rides where anybody operating the the, the ride has uh, many less teeth than the amount of attractions at the mm -hmm. at the festival. And and um, I saw, I remember seeing Johnny Knoxville got off the Scrambler and he was really sick and <laughs> and overwhelmed and scared. He, he couldn't green. take this fucking <laughs> festival ride. He'll blow himself out of a fucking cannon. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't take this little. I had my granddaughter on this ride, and he threw up. He's getting soft in his old age. He really is. is. That's, that's the funny. That's the funny thing about the Malibu Carnival. It's like you could be like, "Oh, I was waiting in line, and Johnny Knoxville just comes off the ride in front of me." Oh yeah, that the chili cookoff. It is, it is a. <laughs> it's it is, a place to be. It is a uh, kind of a a place to be seen yeah. or go see. They have implemented a bunch of new rules though, which I like. What really? What? We're, we didn't go this year. So no kids. You can't be if you're no kids. That's good. If you're <laughs> gonna have a carnival, no kids, and that makes it more enjoyable. If you're under, uh, if you're under eighteen, you have to have a chaperone over twenty-one with you. 
and you can't you can't oh. chaperone more than five kids at a time over the age of. I love that because that, that's why I didn't go back this yeah. year. Last time it was obnoxious. Remember how obnoxious it, it was, was with the, yeah. the was young really the young people, and, young people. And they called obnoxious. you a zaddy. Yes. What is that? <laughs> What's that's, a zaddy? That's creepy. Yeah. I, I, don't, what, I don't even it know was what that really means. Really creepy. It, they were screaming zaddy at you. It's it's like a it's I was like, like a, dad. We need to go. It's like a sugar daddy term. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Well. You still got it, Howie. Yeah. You still got it. <laughs> I'm a hottie. <laughs> All right, Jack. All right. I love your family. My best to uh, Sharon and your dad and say hi to Kelly. And um, you can, would you even call Amy and say that Howie says hi? If I see her, I'll, you know, if I see her in the halls of the house. I don't, I don't really know her. <laughs> but, uh, but you say hi to everyone. Yeah. 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 And yeah. let's pursue that show. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this is Jack Osborne. Subscribe, comment. This is how we Mandel does stuff. Bye, Zaddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's less creepy when you say it. <laughs> that is a great show. I'm not kidding. No. And I think even more now. Oh, yeah. Because there's also a whole...